The whole purpose of the workshop tonight, what does it look like to live the lifestyle? Because, uh, and the way that this came about again is uh, with us being closed pretty much the whole month or, uh, you know, almost the whole month it seemed of May, uh, I really hadn't come up with any workshop or ideas or anything for it on. We've been really hitting uh, like in-depth topics that took a long time to put the workshops together. And uh, so I asked everybody, well, you know, do you guys have any ideas for the workshop for this month? And, you know, of course the, the staff's come up with the brilliant ideas of, you know, the things that I wouldn't think about. Because I'm always, you know, understand it's, I do this stuff every day, so it's like it's just this is the mundane stuff. You know, so I'm thinking, well, you know, what can we get into on all the scientific all ins and outs and everything, like all this advanced stuff that we can teach doctorate courses on. And the reality is most people are just like, well, you know, how about we start with A. You know, like, let's just start with the bare bone basics. So great idea. Um, so, the, so what we're going to go through tonight is literally a room by room just, uh, and this isn't my house, it's just, I, you know, I, I actually spent more time, I think, finding a layout that worked for the presentation than I did putting the workshop together, right? <laughs> because this stuff is just stuff I, you know, I already know. So uh, this, this is uh, just going to walk us through room by room. It was hard to find a house that had a pantry in it. Uh, so, you know, but I had to have a pantry there because that's where most of us get in trouble. So, uh... We're going to go through room by room on what does it mean to actually live the chiropractic lifestyle and, and how do you make this stuff just work, right? You know, how does it just become part of who you are, not, not, uh, not just something that you do, not just going and getting adjusted every week, but there's probably little details that you're just not aware of, you know, so we're going to go through all the little ins and outs and then when I'm done, you can ask questions on any topic regarding this that you want. So if something comes up along the way, don't raise your hand right then and there. Do uh, write it down or take a note or put a note on your iPhone or something, you know, so that, so that you remember to ask at the end. So what exactly does a healthy lifestyle look like? Uh, the first thing we gotta look at is clean environments, okay? What does it mean to have a clean environment? Because I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but most houses, the inside of the houses, are actually much, much more toxic than the outside air. Mm. And why is that? Somebody tell me why. Cleaning products. Cleaning products, right? Who in here cleans our house? Right? Okay. Who in here has used typical cleaning products? All right? See, outside, if you go out and let's say you put some fertilizer on your lawn, you know, the fertilizer might not be good for your lawn. But what eventually happens? It rains, okay? So when it rains, then the, uh, the fertilizer tends to get washed away. So at least it does dissipate over time. But see, in your home, it sinks down into who in here has carpet in their house. You know, those chemicals that get down into the carpet, unlike hardwood floors or, you know, tile or something like that, that's a little better. But in carpet, it just, it sinks down in there and it gets, it gets in there. It doesn't go anywhere, right? And then... You know, we have our children going and crawling around on the carpet, and now they're doing studies called uh, body burden challenges, where they'll test little children. We're talking two and three years old. They'll test them and find that they're loaded with flame retardants and chemicals and all these things that are known to cause cancer, and their bodies are just completely overburdened with it. And then we're surprised when they develop leukemia and, and these other, you know, these other or allergies, right? But it's because we've got all these toxic chemicals in our homes. So we've really got to change the entire mindset of the way that we treat our home. I want you to start thinking of, of, about it like it's your sanctuary, right? That is, that is, that should be your safe house, right? Where if there's anywhere you can go to be safe, it is your home. You know, that, that's, where you, that's where you want to spend the bulk of your time because, you know, outside the walls is toxic, right? So don't make inside the walls even more toxic. So we've got to get rid of the toxic chemicals. And, uh, you know, a, a kind of a side perk to that, who in here has kids or has had small kids? Okay, you ever have, uh, anybody that has grown up kids, you ever have a kid, uh, you know, you, you all of a sudden have the feeling that they got into a chemical that was oh, under the... Yeah. 
Okay, and what happens? You completely freak out, right? Because you think they might have gotten into one of these chemicals. How nice is it to know that there's nothing in your house that your kids can get into that you're worried about? Like, I mean, if they get into a bottle of vinegar, do you think they're going to drink it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's nice to know that they can accidentally get into something. I mean, really, the worst thing that, that our kids have gotten into or in our house is digging in the, in the plants and getting dirt in their mouth. Like, that's the only thing that we've really had to worry about. And that, obviously, I'm not saying we worry about that. It's just dirt. But um, the next one, uh, we'll go into that, is flooring choices because, because it kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, we, you know, obviously, if you live in your house right now, you don't, this doesn't apply to you. Okay? But if you're looking at buying a house, uh, kind of a neat story for us. When, uh, when we moved from an apartment um, into, uh, into our first house, we rented a house for a year, or a year or two years, I don't know, but, but uh, we rented this house, and we really liked the house and everything. It had trees right behind, you know, we liked the layout and all that, and I mean, we really enjoyed it, but there were a couple of things that we didn't like about it. One of them was it had carpet everywhere. And so when we were going to buy our house, we were like, you know, we really like I mean, we, we were sufficient with the space that we had. We had plenty of space. You know, we, there were just these few things, but that was one of them. It was like, it has to have tile through the, through the majority of the house. And so we looked and we looked and we looked and we came across a house that was underpriced and it had these features that we wanted. So we went and we walk in and we're walking around and looking around and we're like, something's weird here. And we realized very quickly it was, our exact same floor plan just flipped over wow. of where we were renting. And yet it had every single one of the features added to it that we wanted in a house, including tile floors. So the house we live in was literally exactly what we wanted. It was, it was great. Um, but if you are going to move, you know, I really suggest you look for a house that has either hardwood floors or tile because it's a lot easier to keep clean, you don't have the allergy accumulation, you don't have all of these other problems. Um, if you replace your carpet at some point, it's probably going to wear out, replace it with hardwood, replace it with something solid. Uh, the worst thing is you're gonna, it's going to take some getting used to walking around with barefoot, right? And it, it's a little bit louder. You know, but that's the worst of it. All the rest of it is just benefit. Except when you fall on it, it's not as cushy, right? So, you know, but I would definitely recommend that. Um, water damage. If you've ever had water damage in your home, who, is, who in here has had water damage before? Okay, the rule is, if water has stood for more than 24 to 48 hours, you probably, you're fine, uh, you probably have already started to grow mold. Okay, 24 to 48 hours it starts to grow mold. And see, the problem with uh, HVAC systems, uh, air conditioning, is it pulls the mold spores up and it sends it all over the house. So if you've had standing water for three or four days, most likely you have mold spores in your, in your home. And this is an issue because the way that homes are built nowadays, they're closed environments. They're not open air environments. And while they're starting to realize this kind of stuff, there's a lot of problems. They, yeah, have you guys heard of sick building syndrome? You know, they have it a lot in schools and uh, in churches, and any large buildings, you know, government buildings and, uh, and you know, commercial buildings typically is, is a bigger issue, skyscrapers, uh, because they have no contact with the outside air at all. So they never get any fresh air. They just recirculate the same stagnant air over and over and over again. And so mold becomes a big issue in these places. So one simple thing that you can do, you can take a mold test. Um, they, we used to, I don't even know if we have any anymore. Do we have any of those, the little box mold tests? I don't even remember where they I came from. from Lowe's before but that. yeah, you, I mean, you can buy them at a hardwood store, or at hardwood, at a hardware <laughs> store, and uh, they're just, they just come in little boxes, and it's got a petri dish in it with some gel, and you go and you set it out for like uh, overnight, and then you close it up and set it aside and see if anything grows in it. And if it grows full of mold, that's because there's mold spores in the air 
that are circulating. If, if you don't see much, I mean, they give the guides in there on how to tell if your home is actually toxic or not. But it's a good test to do. If you're, if you're suspicious that you've got mold in your house, go and pick up one of these kits and just look at it. Uh, especially if you've had bad water damage in the past. Um, air freshening. Who in here uses air fresheners? Okay, the Glade potpourri ones and stuff like that. Do you know that these are on the toxic, like, top 10 list? The worst things that you can put into your house are, are commercial air fresheners. Some of these are so bad that the chemicals are actually designed to kill sensory cells, to kill nerve endings. They, they actually shut down nerve endings so you can't smell the bad stuff. Right? I mean, that's just insane. It's like, well, we're going to make sure you don't smell anything. We're just going to shut it off. So, you know, if a uh, real simple solution, get some essential oils. Get, you know, get some cinnamon sticks. Get something natural, you know, to put in your home. There's plenty of people around here that sell essential oils, right? <laughs> we, we, we have a few of them in here. But, uh, but get rid of the commercial air freshers. Do not use them. And if you happen to be in a public restroom, when the little thing on the wall goes poof, cover your mouth and run. <laughs> Ideally, pull up your pants first, right? But, <laughs> but cover your mouth and run. You, you do not want to be bringing that stuff in. And sometimes they put it like, I mean, it's like head level. You're sitting there and all of a sudden it squirts you in the eye, right? So stay away from those things. They're, they're really bad news. Um, air cleaning. There's some really good air purifiers on the market. I like Air Oasis. Uh, we use those here. We got one up front. We've got one up here in my area. We've got them over. Uh, I think we got them over at Red Bar. I don't, I don't remember. But we've got another uh, one over there. Air Oasis. It doesn't use ozone. It uses like four different um, four different uh, alkalizing. Uh, I don't know. Look it up. Uh, whatever it is, it's good. Uh, they're, they're really good systems. They, they, you go ahead. Have you heard anything about the GB locks? You can put your air conditioning system. You, yes, yes. Air Oasis yeah. actually makes an induct unit. They're fantastic. Yeah, and I'm trying. Somebody look it up on your on your cell phone. It's uh, it's Air Oasis, and it, it produces four different um, four different gases. That the way that they work is they 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 precipitate out. They, uh, it just works through osmosis and works its way through the air. So let's say you put one of them in your duct unit. You can put it in your central HVAC system and they have to be professionally installed, but you put it in and it starts filling the duct, right? And then your air conditioning comes on and blows it all out all throughout your house. Now, when it gets out into the air, it connects up with germs and spores and mold and dirt and all that other stuff. Uh, smoke, anything else that's in the air, it connects to it and makes it heavy and it falls down to the ground. And then all you have to do is go and vacuum. And so every time you vacuum, you're pulling all the stuff that's, that was in the air and it's sucking it all up. It's great. Anybody got it up yet? Yeah? What do you have? Did you find the, uh, the chemicals that it produced? No? Somebody's going to find it. Race. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, there, there's a number of different ones. They, they make ozone purifiers, but, you know, they're, they can kind of get nauseating after a while because, you know, you're, you're not really designed to breathe that much ozone. So I like these systems a lot better. Um, just if somebody finds it, just raise your hand, yell out something. Um, as far as cleaning uh, products, the first one that you can use is vinegar for glass uh, and, and hard surfaces. Vinegar, it's dirt cheap. Uh, you don't have to have organic vinegar. You can just use regular vinegar. I mean, it's an inert ingredient, um, but it works great. It doesn't leave streaks on glass. Uh, you can clean tables and toilets and anything else. The worst thing is it smells a little bit like vinegar for, for a short time and then it disappears. You know, and it'll make your hands stink for a while, right? But that's the worst of it. Uh, Castile Soap. Who in here has heard of Dr. Bronner's, right? That's just one company, okay? Um, they're an easy one to find. Guy was a little kooky. You might not agree with the, all the little weird sayings on the side of the bottle. Have you guys ever read that stuff? It's crazy. Uh, there's, a, there's a documentary about him, um, uh, Dr. Bronner's Magic Soapbox. 
It was really weird. Um, but anyways, you know, rest his soul. He's he's actually passed away, and his family runs a company now. But it's good stuff. It's really clean soap. Um, we use uh, Vermont Soap Organics. Uh, I think that's what it's called. This is yes. Vermont something. And uh, that's in our restrooms. Uh, we sell it over at Red Bar. That stuff is good. Uh, um, Keller Works that we sell over there. That's Castile soap as the base of it with essential oils and stuff worked into it. That's more body soap though. You know, you don't want to clean your table with a bar soap. Um, but the, the Castile soap, and the good thing about that, it goes forever. You can take one little bottle, the little, you know, if you go into the health food store and you buy a bottle of Dr. Bronner's, you don't need the giant jug. You can use a little one and it just takes drops of it into a squirt bottle and it goes a long ways, okay? Um, so that stuff is great. If you need to disinfect surfaces, silver, okay? You can either take the silver spray bottle if you really need to saturate something like, let's say your kid pukes on your hardwood floor, um, the dog poops on the floor, you know, something like that, uh, kind of hard with carpet, right? But if it's a hardwood floor or surface, um, if you're cleaning a toilet, you can take the silver in a spray bottle, like the spray bottle back there, um, and you can. And I think, do we have silver in that, or is that just Castile? Um, we, uh, you know, you can just use that and spray the surface, and then wipe it down with a paper towel. If you need to uh, do a general disinfecting of a surface, you know, your uh, nebulizers. They just put out a mist of it. You can just take that, and you can nebulize over surfaces. And the stuff is powerful enough that it will give you a general, um, especially if it's a cloth, you know, it'll, it'll be able to do that a lot easier. Um, so the silver works great. Essential oils, like we said, for disinfecting, but they're also cleaning agents. You can use, um, it depends on the different oil that you use, but some of them have very strong antibacterial properties. Um, would I recommend that over the silver? No, not really. I would, I would go ahead and I'd do the silver for the two. But if you want it to smell good, you can mix the essential oils in with the soap, right? And then you've got, you've got scented cleaning supplies. Uh, then the last one, steam. A lot of people don't know that you can use steam for uh, surface cleaning. Uh, there's a, what is it, the shark? You guys might have seen the commercials on that. Guys, I mean, it's an infomercial, but it works. Any kind of steam cleaning for bathroom and stuff like that for disinfecting, it works really, really well. And you are going to kill bacteria uh, more through a mechanical thermal process than you are a chemical process. So the point is, there's tons of options on this stuff. I mean, you can, you can get around the chemicals. So if you go home tonight, open up your cabinets, look at all your chemicals, make a list of what you need to replace. And if you can't replace them all at once, replace the ones that you use the most and then start working your way through them. Or if you have kids, you might want to start with the most toxic ones first, okay? Uh, so that they're unlikely to get into the chemicals and end up getting sick. All right, um, the next one we're gonna look at is the laundry room. Uh, as far as laundry detergents, we don't really think about this enough. But if you, you know, who in here wears clothes every day? <laughs> Hopefully everybody, right? Okay, so if you wear clothes, and you're washing your clothes in harsh chemicals, you have those up against your body all day long. Okay, it's, it's a, I mean, this is almost a bigger issue than even the house cleaners, because the house cleaners, if anything, if you walk around barefoot, you're, you're likely to be washing it. But you're putting your clothes on every day, and usually they're clean clothes, which means they're freshly saturated in chemicals, right? So we don't think about this, but, even when you switch laundry detergents and you start using something like soap nuts or other green cleaners, um, you've got to make sure that they're actually green cleaners. You might want to get on a, a website like uh, skindeep.org, um, the Environmental Working Group. Uh, that's their website. You can get on and you can look at a lot of these common cleaners and you can research them. If you can't find that particular cleaner, you can take a picture with your cell phone, go home, and you can actually look up the individual ingredients on there and get a toxicity rating. You can even, if you put in your email, you can create an entire report for that product. Okay, you can go in and log in and put all the chemicals in there with commas behind them, and it'll generate a report for you. Okay, 
So the tools are there to make this stuff really easy, but the, the best option is just do the simple stuff. Uh, but as I was saying, if you use something like one of these green cleaners, if you've had clothes for a while that have been using regular detergents, you know it's going to take a number of cycles before you get all those chemicals out of your clothes. It's not a quick process. It, it, it can take 6-12 washes before you get all this stuff out. Um, the next one, dryer sheets, dry cleaning, all this other stuff. If you don't have enough chemicals on your clothes, use dryer sheets. You know? Use these other chemicals and it, it's even a bigger issue. Regular dry cleaning. Ask for, uh, does anybody know, there, Jen, is there a clean, a green dry cleaner around here? Didn't you say something about that? Okay. I know there's such a thing as green dry cleaning now, where they don't use the ingredients that your typical places do, but most places they use disgusting chemicals to dry clean. So if you get a lot of stuff dry clean and starch and press and all that stuff, that, that's even worse than, than your standard. Especially, you know, a lot of times people will go and get their mattress or their mattress covers of, you know, all, all their um, bedding dry clean and then you're sleeping in it in direct contact for eight hours a night. So you can see where we get all these chemicals from. Um, Overwashing, um, what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times we wear out clothes and we're exposed to even more chemicals because people overwash their clothes. You know, it's like you wear a shirt, who in here has kids? particularly like, you know, six to 12 years old, you know, and they'll put on a shirt for an hour and then throw it in the dirty clothes. <laughs> You know, so you end up using a lot more of these chemicals all the time because we overwash clothes. For the most part, pants, you know, who in here honestly wears their pants more than one time before they wash them? Almost everyone. Great. Okay? You should. I mean, if, if your pants look clean, they'll last a lot longer if you don't wash them constantly. Now, they get to that point where you know they need to be washed. <laughs> Others may know it before you, right? But, uh, but there is that point. But for the most part, we overwash a lot of stuff. So be, be conscious of this stuff. Uh, the next one we'll go to is a garage. Um, Tasha Car Care. I, I have a story with this one. Um, I was just telling somebody about it earlier. Uh, you, actually. Uh, I, I never thought about it. when you know Here we had gotten rid of all of the chemicals in our house. We had no chemicals in the house whatsoever. But then I never, it just didn't cross my mind as I was standing out there washing my car with these horrendous chemicals. And so, uh, Castrol, uh, Castrol Super Clean. I was cleaning the rims on my car. Okay, and so I'm down there with my scrub brush, you know, spraying it and rubbing it and spraying it and rubbing it, you know, getting all the, all the grease and grime and everything off my tires. Well, that night, my hands started getting all red and I'm like, you know, they started hurting on what in the world is going on? My skin literally fell off. Like, the, I, my, I ended up, the whole tops of both of my hands were raw. And I ended up having to adjust the whole next, like, week and a half with, who, who in here was around then? Anybody? No? You don't remember that? It was a long time ago, but... But I, I literally had bandages wrapped around my hands for a week and a half. I looked like a mummy adjusting everybody. You know, and, and it was it was bad because of course, you know, I get my hand underneath and you drop it and it was like you know, every single time somebody dropped my raw hand. Um, so get rid of the chemicals that you wash your car with. There are some good chemicals like or good uh, uh, components like Zymol car wax. It's the blue stuff, it's actually made with coconut. Okay, so there are some, they're, they're even coming out with car care stuff now that, that works better. Yep. And how is even after washing your hands that you got the chemical down? Oh yeah, I mean I wash my hands and everything. It's not like I left it sitting on there. It's just from the time I was actually washing. And I was washing with water too. But that's how bad it was. I mean obviously it's not designed to be dipping your hands into it. I should have read the warning label, right? Uh, yard poisons. Um, we got to call them what they are. They're yard poisons. You know, most of the time the chemicals that we put on our yard uh, for weed killer and all that kind of stuff. Um, not to mention Roundup. You know, which you're, you know, if you use that kind of stuff, you're you're feeding the giants. 
um, you know, Monsanto and a lot of these big chemical companies, they're producing this stuff and you put it on your lawn and it doesn't just kill the, the bad insects, it kills the good insects too. Uh, you know, fertilizers, I mean there, there are some good fertilizers that aren't really anything but just the raw ingredients. But most of your stuff, uh, ant killers, things like that, you really want to be careful with. If you can't drink it, you might think about using it. That's kind of the general rule, okay? Uh, healthy fertilizers you can get. Um, now, when I mean healthy, I would not recommend going and buy, you know, uh, taking a handful of Mighty Grow Organics and eating it, okay? It's chicken poop, right? <laughs> but it is a healthy alternative fertilizer, okay? They, um, they, they're actually produced here in Alabama, um, just north of here, but uh, I've met with the owners. They're completely like all natural thinking, you know, very organic, conscious minded, and everything. And uh, they sell the fertilizer now at A Bloom, uh, which is right over here on um, uh, Old Shell, Old Shell and Cody, or no, Albers. before Cody. Albers. Albers. That way, Albers. Albers. yes. Albers. Albers. <laughs> that way, Alberson. Okay, so you can go there and you can pick it up. That stuff works great. That's what we've been using in our garden this year. Um, water collection, uh, this is, you know, it's one of those things you can do if, you know, you might think about doing it because every time you use city water, you are squirting out, um, you know, chlorine and fluoride and all that stuff. Uh, but if you put in a simple water collection system in the back of your yard with like, you know, the big tubs that collect rainwater, you can use that to water your garden. Um, then uh, eat your yard. What I mean by that, how many people eat their yard? Otherwise known as gardening. Growing vegetables? Not very many. The, the, the funny thing is this. Isn't, isn't this ironic if, when you think about it? Uh, Jonathan and I were talking about this earlier today. Uh, I think it was today. Uh, that if, you know, we talk about the world having a food shortage. You know, you, have you guys heard that talk that we can't feed the world? Do you realize how much space we're wasting just in our yards? of what we could all produce. I mean, if we, if you just put in a small garden in your backyard, you could produce enough food for you and your neighbors. Imagine if everybody just did that as, you know, anybody with a yard. I mean, it's not hard to do. You can pop okra seeds in your ground and walk away and never touch them, and they're going to produce. Uh, I mean, there are certain things that's in different regions that are just so easy to take care of you know, they're no-brainers. You know, green beans grow really well here. Collards, if you can keep, um, if you can keep the worms off of the collards, which we've had a, a hard time doing, um, but I do have a secret for that I'm going to give you later. Uh, if you can keep them off, then collards grow amazingly well here. Uh, there's different things that you can use, but, you know, start eating your yard. Grow stuff that you can eat. Don't just grow flowers and grass. You can't eat it, right? I, I, I take that back. Some flowers you can. Yeah, a lot of the flowers you can. You can eat petunias. You can eat these flowers. So look that up. Not all of them. Okay. Um, next one here is the kitchen. Okay. Toxic dish detergents. Uh, here's another one that a lot of us don't think about. You eat off your dishes after they've been washed every single time that you use them, right? You don't reuse your dishes like you do pants. So every time that you wash your dishes, you're getting a film of those chemicals that make it look shiny and bright and clean and everything, but all that chemical is getting on there. Even scarier thought is when you eat in a restaurant, and they're using commercial disinfectant cleaners. Because of course, I mean, in food service, you want to be clean, right? Um, we use at Red Bar what? Vermont, so the organic. What do we use to wash dishes? Oh, seventh generation, like clean. Yeah, and, and bleach. Yeah. You know, you have to bleach dishes we afterwards. Have we have to use bleach afterwards. Um, but most of that evaporates off because it's just dipped in it afterwards. But anyways, the, uh, the, the harsh chemicals that they use in restaurants, every time you pick up a new spoon or a new plate and you're scraping your food off, you're putting that stuff in your mouth. Quite a thought, isn't it? So when you're at home, and this is another reason to eat at home as much as you possibly can, 
you want to use the safe stuff. You want to use the clean stuff so you're not spooning in these chemicals. All right, cookware. Who in here still uses non-stick cookware? Okay. And what I mean by that is like the Teflon coated stuff. All right. We really got to be careful with, if you have any Teflon coated pans, go home and throw them away immediately. Don't ever use them again. Okay. There's, it's been all over the media for a couple of years now about the dangers of Teflon, but still, you know, I find a lot of people miss it and they still sell a lot of this stuff. But get rid of the Teflon. Um, the, the pans that I recommend using are A, stainless steel, just basic stainless steel cookware. Um, if you use coconut oil or something like that, you don't have to worry about it sticking so much. Um, the next best one would be uh, ceramic uh, uh, ceramic coated cast iron. Have you guys seen those ones? They're the heavy duty cast iron ones, but they've got a ceramic coating on the inside. Those are fantastic. Um, another, the, another one, once you season it, you know, a lot of people are scared of cast iron because if you let it, you know, stay wet, they can rust, which you just got to dry your dishes. You got to wash them and dry them immediately. Take good care of them. But then also because stuff sticks to them, right? But after you let them season, once they, get, once they get really good, man, nothing sticks to them. So they work really well. Uh, but those are the three ones that I really, you know, encourage everybody to switch over to. And they're cheap. You know, that's a funny thing. Stainless steel and cast iron, you can get those from uh, old-time pottery. I mean, they're dirt cheap. They don't cost anything. Instead, we're going out and, you know, buying these anodized aluminum ones and everything, which is putting aluminum into your food. So we got to watch out for the cookware that we're using. The next one, plastics. If you have any plastic cups, plastic bowls, anything like that, unless you can absolutely confirm that it is BPA free, throw it away. Get rid of it. Especially if you're using it to put hot foods into. If you ever make hot stuff and then you put it in a Tupperware, you have to make sure that it is BPA free or else you're leaching cancer causing BPA into your food. So leftovers don't just taste worse, they, they actually hurt you as well. Okay. Uh, that goes into another one that a lot of people don't know, which uh, really goes more with the pantry, but if you ever eat canned goods, you need to make sure that the canned goods specifically say no BPA on the can. Do you know that they use BPA to line the inside of canned goods? A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, they use it to line the inside of it. So, you know, uh, if you eat, let's say, black beans or something like that that you can wash, pour them out into a strainer and then wash them really good before you cook them. Don't cook them in the juice that they're sitting in. Because any chemicals that were in there, they're in the juice. I mean, even the organic stuff, we still a lot of times drain that off and wash it before we actually eat it because you never know what's really in there. You want just the beans. Eden Organics does BPA-free. Eden Organics does do BPA-free cans. There, I mean, there's a couple of them that do it now, but uh, you know, camel soups and stuff like that, you know, you know, they're they put MSG in their soup. I doubt they're worried about the BPA. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, companies are being forced to become more aware of this stuff because the information is becoming more available. Um, the next one is uh, green bags. Have you, have you guys seen those green produce bags? Okay, those, those are great for keeping compost, or not compost, uh, keeping uh, vegetables fresh. I've never tried it for compost in my work. Um, but they, uh, they will keep lettuce and stuff like that fresh longer. So you might look into those. Um, very simple process that they use. Um, waste or compost, you know, do you guys, th this goes back to the gardening thing. Think about the amount of waste that you throw away from banana peels to uh, eggshells to um, the ends off your zucchini to all these different things. If you throw away all this stuff, you're throwing a lot of, away a lot of, in, in, in many cases, organic, very expensive ingredients, right? You know, you buy organic lettuce and yet you're, we're throwing away the stem. You buy organic zucchini and you're throwing away, you know, uh, the ends of it and the stuff like that. But that's great compost. So you're going, you put it into a compost bin 
we've got this giant one in our backyard, one of these big 55 gallon, you know, orange drums with a screw lid on the top. And you just take a drill, drill holes in the side of it all the way around from top to bottom. You know, the, the holes are probably this far apart. And then every time that you get waste, go out and dump it in there. And every year we end up getting uh, the little black soldier flies. They come in there and they lay their larva. And you open the thing up and it's swarming with these little uh, grubs to where when they demolish everything, it looks like a, it looks like a pool of motor oil that's just crawling <laughs> from these grubs. They destroy compost. But they make absolutely amazing compost that you can turn around and use on your garden. And the birds love it. The birds go over there and they pick in the sides of the holes and they eat the they eat the worms. So, you know, you can turn this stuff over and you can use it year after year. Coffee grounds, you can, instead of throwing it down the drain, which clogs your sink or putting it in the trash, if it's your organic stuff, go and throw it on your garden or on your grass even. Just go out and throw it across your lawn. It's pH balanced. It's not acidic anymore. All the acid comes out when you brew the coffee. But it's loaded with nitrogen and other content that your grass, your lawn, your fruits, your vegetables, they can use. It's fantastic. Uh, banana peels are the same way. People go through those like crazy. Flowers love banana peels. Um, water filtration. When you look at water filtration, uh, do you guys drink tap water? If you use tap water, get even the cheapest possible filter that you can buy. Just get a, uh, well, what's the one? The Brita. Pure or Brita. Brita or something like that. Just get one of those cheap ones. You're at least going to take out the bulk of the, of the minerals, you know, the, the, via, the volatile organic compounds and, and bacteria and things like that. Unfortunately, unless you get a better system, you're not going to get out the chlorine and the fluoride. And fluoride is very, very toxic. It's, uh, they're, they're pulling it out in city water supplies all over the country. All over the world, they've already banned it, yet it's still in our water supply and most of the United States. It's a byproduct of aluminum production. They used to have to spend millions of dollars to dispose of fluoride. Now they sell it to the water companies. Yeah, it's insane. You know, but, and they used to say it causes strong teeth. Now, if you read the news, what does it cause? Fluoridation. It actually caused your teeth to become chalky and brittle. So it's crazy that it's still in the water, but you can get systems to filter that out over at Red Bar on all the water. We all, and the same ones we use at home. They're called um, uh, they're Aquas called Aquaspace. Space. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I was thinking Air Oasis. I thought I said Aquaspace for the air filter. Um, no, it's called Aquaspace. You can get on and look it up. And here's a tip: if you do want to pick up one of their systems, ask them for the Dr. Mike Bucknell discount. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I say that because uh, because the the guys are they actually know us because we bought so many filters from them, um, and I've talked to the the guy that uh, their their head engineer and everything enough about about how their systems work, but they offer a John Barron discount. He's a southern medical doctor like that has a website and everything. I'm like I'm like look dude, I'm not sending anybody to you for the John Barron discount ever again. I'm sending them to you for the Mike Bucknell discount. You get that? And he's like all right, I got you. So. <laughs> Uh, so they are great, great systems. I really encourage you to pick up one of theirs. Are they just like at the sink or do they do um, a whole house? You can get whole house units that are this big. Uh, but the cool thing about them, if you call and you talk to, I think it's Michael, um, he will, he will, sorry Mike if you watch this video, but he will talk your ear off. Um, <laughs> he, because he loves what he does. He's, he's, he's built for water filtration. Um, <laughs> And so he'll, he will ask you every question under the sun as far as what you want and need, and he'll set you up with exact specifications for what you need. I mean, he, so much that I thought I knew what I wanted for over there, and he's like, no, we're not doing that for your ice machine. This is what you're doing for your ice machine, and our ice looks like glass. I mean, it's, it's amazingly clean because he did it that way. So uh, I, I really like their company. They run it right. They have the right ideals, the right principles. So I'd encourage you to use them. Um, microwaves. Who in here has a microwave that they still use at home? Okay, I'm calling out a lot of stuff here, so don't be embarrassed, right? Uh, 
if you use, still use a microphone at uh, microphone, a microwave at home. <laughs> um, the uh, I I I picked up on Amazon a really cheap uh, what's it called a gauss meter, gauss meter. Somebody help me out here. It's one of the little uh, it's one of the little meters that measures radioactive activity. Geiger counter. A, a Geiger meter. Yeah, maybe that's it. Um, <laughs> And uh, all I know, it was this cool little thing that's got a needle on it and a wand, okay? And uh, so I walked around. The first thing I did is I walked around the office in here, and I held it up to, like, computers and TVs and cell phones and stuff like that. And it was like, you know, and we, you know, and then I got over the x-ray machine, and I was like, you know. I mean, it, 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 you, you, but you had to get next to, even the x-ray machine, you had to get next to it, right? Well, then I went home. And I said, let's try this on the microwave. And so, of course, when you get over the next to the microwave, nothing happens. But then, you know, I'm standing next to the microwave, and I'm like, ding, 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 bing, hit it. You know, it goes off the chart. I'm like, wow, holy moly. So I start backing up. I literally got halfway across the room from the thing, and it's still going nuts. Because that's the radiation that's coming off of the microwave. Guys, it's just not good. You know, uh, you look at other countries, I think it's, uh, I think Germany, you might have to confirm this, but um, somebody told me at one point that Germany actually does not sell microwaves. That they, they've, they've eliminated the technology because, because they found it unfit for human use. So, check it out, look that up, see if it's true. Check out, uh, what, what's that, Snopes.com, maybe it's not true, but either way, we don't use it. It's, uh, ours is actually unplugged uh, from the inside, so it's, it's a giant, ugly uh, uh, shelf now. I guess we can put plates in it. <laughs> so, uh, next one is the pantry. Uh, I had a question here. When, when I was getting ready to do this workshop, a, a patient gave me a fantastic idea that I'm sure you guys would have loved. She said, here's what you should do. You should not call, just look up your patient's addresses and just show up at their house with a video camera. And so here you go, you show up at their house with a video camera and knock on the door and they open the door and then, what are you doing here? Oh, we're going to go through your pantry, right? I'm coming in, right? And we go through and we videotape as I walk through your pantry and look at what's in there. Right? So that, that's what the point is here. Would your pantry embarrass you? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay? Think about that. Would your pantry embarrass you? And so, if you find that to be true, it probably lines up with this next one. Snack kills. Right? Instead of crack kills. Snack. Anybody in here? You're right. You, you know, you snack at night. You know, you sit down and watch TV and stuff. That's where people really get in trouble, is when they snack. So my wife is absolutely wonderful about this, only allowing like a handful of things to snack on. So guess what? I'm just like everybody else. I go and every every night like clockwork, I'm looking in the cabinet, bummed. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm in there and and uh, you know, but we we keep uh, like dehydrated fruit and you know and stuff like that in there and nuts and peanuts and cashews and things like that. So. So I'm in there and I'm like, what looks good? What looks good? Nothing looks good. Um, so back to the default, you know, and I'll grab that. And but you know what? That's you. You see what I'm saying? That's the way it should be. Because if you have Twinkies or Ho Hos or Ding Dongs or whatever it is in there, you're probably gonna eat it, right? You're gonna grab it in those moments. So don't leave bags of Fritos in your pantry. That because snack kills. Everybody say it. Snack, snack kills. kills. Okay? I want you to think about that tonight when you reach in your pantry. Okay? So the replacement rule. Okay? This is where this comes in. The replacement rule simply says if you have something that you can't live without, right? People are like, oh my God, my Diet Coke. I can't live without it. Okay, then don't. Get an alternative to it. Right? Pick up a six-pack of Zevia. The good news is, it's not even diet. It doesn't even say it on the, on the can, right? You guys get that? It's just regular Coke. 
but it still doesn't have any of the junk in it. Okay? If you can't live without your Dr. Pepper, get the Dr. Pepper alternative. If you can't live without potato chips, pick up a bag of veggie chips, even though they might not be as good, right? So, you know, anything tastes anything tastes better with MSG on it because it's a neurotoxic. It literally works like cocaine. It stimulates brain activity. So get rid of the garbage and replace it with something healthier. I'm not saying, you know, the replacement is a apple for a bag of potato chips. You know, I'm just saying find a correlation. You guys see now, if you go to Virginia's health food stores, which again I highly recommend. Who in here shops at Virginia's? Okay. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> um, we uh, that was, that was for Chrissy if she watches this on YouTube. Um, Virginia's is awesome. Uh, they they have all the and we are getting finally next year a Whole Foods. Yes, finally. There are literally alternatives for everything now. I mean, if you like potato chips, if you like Reese's peanut butter cups, there are healthy alternatives for them now because the world is demanding it. So the replacement rule is easier now than it was a year ago and just mountains easier than it was five years ago. Okay? The next one you're going to like even more. That's a vacation rule. And that simply says that you're allowed to cheat once in a while. You don't have to eat perfect all the time unless you're on the advanced plan, right? <laughs> if you're on the advanced plan, I'm sorry, you can't cheat. <laughs> you, you better imagine that you're cheating when you're eating something with sweet and little stevia because that's the best you're going to get. Uh, but the, the vacation rule simply says if you're on the core plan and you know what? You want to go and you want to take your date, your, your, <laughs> take your date, take your wife out on a date. <laughs> Hopefully you're not taking a date out. <laughs> um, if you want to take your wife out on a date and you go out to eat, you're probably not going to find perfect. You know, you're probably not going to bring a microfiber cloth with a bottle of vinegar to wash your silverware before dinner, right? Uh, so you can cheat once in a while when you do things clean most of the time. Does that make sense? Because you're lowering your toxic burden. So it's it's always funny when you know we're out to eat. And we run into somebody that we know. Because what are they doing? Looking to see. <laughs> yeah. They're they're like, oh, uh, gotcha. You know, they're, they're, they're like snickering because we're out eating. And it's like, dude, you're this is why we're having this workshop. Because the, the big idea is, yeah, we do it too. You know, we'll go to the Cheesecake Factory once in a while and, and so, I chill. mean Yeah, to chill. Been yeah, chill. we've been chill. We've actually seen patients there. The funny thing is, for us to see you there, you got to be there. <laughs> so, you really can't get on me about it. Um, but the, 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 the big picture is, you know, you can, you can vacation. You know, you can do these things once in a while. If you go on vacation, the, you know, you're probably going to be out of town where you don't know what the environment is going to be as far as what restaurants are available. So do the best that you can. If you're clean all the time, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to completely break you. Okay? Uh, but, but, that rule comes in the next one. Realizing the sanctity of your sanctuary. Your home is your sanctuary. Keep it clean. Because if you're clean at home, then when you're out and about, you can handle it. Okay, you see that translates across a lot of lines there, not just food. But keep your home clean because you're going to be exposed to all kinds of stuff out there. All right? Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but my husband, my child, etc., who has used that excuse with me? I can't get rid of this because my husband wants it. I can't get rid of that because I have to cook for my child this way. And I'm like, Stop feeding your kid french fries and chicken nuggets, right? You know, just because your child demands it, they're still a child. Feed them what they should eat, and when they get hungry enough, they'll start eating, right? They might starve for a couple of days. That's okay, you know? Our, kid, our kids are like, you know, I'm like, you don't want to eat? All right, see you tomorrow night, you know? We'll try it again, uh, but, but we're not going to break on that. So... So don't let your child or your husband or something, especially moms, don't let that be an excuse because guess what? What is the likelihood that your husband's going to take over grocery shopping for you? Zero percent. Probably zero. So guess what? You've got control. Yeah. So change it. 
and, and they're going to be like me whimpering at the pantry, you know, looking for something to snack on. But, oh well. Uh, canned goods, we already talked about that one. Fresh or everlasting. What that means, who in here has everlasting, everlasting food in their pantry? Meaning the stuff that you could go into. Have you ever noticed that? Like, the inside shelves of the grocery store, all the aisles, they're full of food that will never go bad. It's like it doesn't have an expiration date. They put it on there just for namesake, but I mean, even McDonald's hamburgers don't have expiration dates. Have you guys seen the Bionic Burger? <laughs> no? Look up on YouTube, it's called the Bionic Burger, where they took uh, McDonald's hamburgers and french fries and like stuck them in their jacket pockets for a couple of years and they come out looking and smelling exactly the same. Oh, yeah, wow. it's, you know, they have so many preservatives in them that they do not go bad. So you've got to, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that your stuff actually decomposes. That's a good thing because if it doesn't decompose, it doesn't digest either. Okay? And you don't want that stuff sitting stagnant inside of your intestinal walls. Remember the last workshop when we talked about mucoid plaque? Okay? That's the uh, men, listen especially, when you got the little, uh, the little man pooch here and, and it doesn't, go away and it's firm, okay, that's because of mucoid plaque in the intestines. That's the stuff coated on the inside that's like like rubber and tar, okay? Go back and watch the Big Fat Lie workshop and it's on there. All right, next one is uh, in the bedroom. We're going to be short on this one, right? Uh, mattresses. Mattresses. If you're, you know, who in here has bought a, uh, a memory foam mattress? Okay, we've got a few of them. Do you, know, do you know how toxic memory foam mattresses are when you first buy them? They off-gas horrible chemicals for up to two years after you buy them. Yeah, you're scared, you're scared the hell out of me, dude. I mean, where you going, man? Just kind of call us, call and call your pastor on the back here. Will you come and pray for my home, please? Uh, yeah, it's uh, they, they off gas for up to two years after you buy them. No, this is serious. Uh, when you buy, uh, when you when you go and you furnish a new home, I'll, I'll tell you a story of a good colleague of mine, a, a, a friend of mine. Um, this is a this was a chiropractor, and uh, he was you know his health was declining pretty quickly. And then he literally collapsed on top of a patient one day. And they brought him to the hospital and they did brain scans and they found he had four tumors wrapped around his brain. He had one wrapped around his brain stem, literally choking off cerebrospinal fluid flow through to his cord. And that's why he, that's why he blacked out on top of the patient. Um, and so he, uh, luckily he was in a position where, I mean, he's got like four clinics in the Chicago area. So uh, he was financially able to get the best treatment in the world. So he flew to Spain, you know, and he went all over the place to get like the best natural treatments that you could get. Well, in the process of that, they did, uh, they did toxicity testing and they found that he was loaded with um, known cancer causing uh, flame retardants that they use in new furniture. And when he found this, he just about hit the floor because they had moved out of their house into one house and then they ended up having to, they, they like moved there and then they moved into another house that was being built. And then shortly after that one, there were problems with that house. So they built another house. And then when that one moved in, they moved into that one. And then in the process, you know, they were adding furniture and stuff like that. And so he was around all of these chemicals, like just slammed with chemicals for like three or four years straight. And he ended up with a brain tumor. He, he actually survived, he lived, um, he went through all the, all the natural treatments and everything and destroyed four brain tumors. So and this is a guy that they said was going to be probably dead in six weeks and he survived it. So don't tell me that cancer is not curable. So anyhow, you got to think about mattresses uh, and the chemicals that are in there. Um, if you've had it for a few years, it's probably not that big of a deal now. If you do get a memory foam mattress, switch to latex. Get a latex memory foam mattress, unless you're allergic to latex, of course. Um, that wouldn't be good either. Uh, pillows. I firmly believe, and you guys all know this, I'm sure, that pillows were the worst invention humankind ever came up with. Maybe outside of bombs, right? But 
uh, they, they destroy people's spines. You know, and even if you look at how many people are side sleepers or were side sleepers, okay? They, I tell people about this all the time. Think about it. If you were in the middle of, say, uh, Afghanistan or Syria or somewhere like that where, you know, you didn't have houses and everything, where you'd have to sleep on the ground, right? Do you think you'd be sleeping on your side or on your back? You'd be sleeping on your back. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you just find whatever you can, but the best position to sleep on would be on your back with maybe something underneath your neck, okay? But here, fancy pants people come up with the idea of nice fluffy pillows. And so they put them all over their beds, probably for decoration at first, but then, you know, here, this fluffy pillow, you put your head on, you know, right. and it, doesn't it feel wonderful? And everybody starts using pillows. Well, see, now it's not uncomfortable. It's not comfortable to sleep on your back, right? Because your head's all kicked up like this. Right. So what do you do? Now you turn over on your side to sleep on the pillow. And so now everybody's side sleepers. I wonder why, right? We created it that way. But, and then I'm like, get rid of the pillow. It's terrible for you. You need to fix the curve in your neck. And everybody's like, oh, I can't sleep on my back. You know, I'm on the side sleep. Oh, no. I tried those things for like two nights, right? And I'm a side sleeper, so I can't use it. Some of you guys have told me that, I'm sure. Yeah, right? Um, so I can't use it. I'm a side sleeper. You know, and I'm like, let me over to your house. Not just for the video. I'm going to take your pillow and like, I'm going to burn it in the backyard. And save your life. Uh, so the... Uh, uh, anyways, you guys get the idea. Get rid of pillows. You don't need them. That, that's just that's the general picture there. It's not about toxins. They're destroying your spine. Um, televisions. Uh, there's only one acceptable form of entertainment in the bedroom. Enough said. Okay. Get rid of the televisions. Um, smart meters. Uh, Amber? Is Amber here? I was going to let her have five minutes on smart meters. But since she's not here, we'll, we'll do that another time. Um, <laughs> Uh, cell phones, moving on, um, cell phones, uh, if you guys, one of the new trends, have you guys seen the apps that like you're supposed to like leave your iPhone underneath you or something like that on the bed and it records your sleep patterns and how many times you wake up during the night and move and everything, have you seen those? Yeah. They're like motion sensor, it uses the, the, the gyro thing inside of your phone to measure how much you wake up during the night. The problem is, you have to sleep on top of a radioactive device. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's not, it's, it's not that important, please. So take your cell phone and set it on the other side of your nightstand or like on the other side of the room. Just get it as far from your body as you can, okay? Because cell phones emit radiation. They know it. It's, there's tons of information on this. Um, what, what is that website? rfsafe.com or rfsafe.org? I think it is, uh, you can get on there and read about cell phones and the, uh, the, the radiation that they put off. I see women all the time, yes, even patients, you know, they'll come in here and they're playing with their phone and it's ready to get adjusted. Oh, okay. Oh. And they put it into their bra. You know, that's, that's apparently the new purse. So, uh, terrible. I mean, you're walking around, breast cancer is like the number one form of cancer in women and you're putting an iPhone right on it. I mean, terrible idea. So whenever you can, if you have a cell phone, uh, did it cut off just then? Just for a second. Just for a second. Great. All right. <laughs> Good eye. Um, when you uh, when you have a cell phone, you know, like like I'll just give you what I do. When I uh, when I'm here working, my cell phone's in the office. When I leave here, I grab my cell phone, I put it in my pocket, I go home, and I set it on the desk. So it's in the same room with me wherever I go. If I'm out and about, I'll have it in my pocket. But whenever I get home, it's off. You know, I mean, it's, it's off my body, right? You know, but if you have one of those cool little hip holsters like I used to have, which were outdated in 1990, um, <laughs> don't have them sitting on your hip all day long, right? The point is, have them somewhere off of your body. Put them aside. Put them aside. You don't want them all, all the time. I'm sorry if I offended anybody on that one. <laughs> if you got the cool hip holster, they're still cool. <laughs> yes? Is it a matter, too, of turning Wi-Fi off when we can? Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you... 
I mean, if you can, if, if it's one of those things where you can turn the Wi-Fi off, you know, yes, if you're carrying around all, all the time, you want to turn it off, but the, big, the best plan is just to set it aside. I mean, for the most part, most of us aren't getting away from Wi-Fi now because most computers and everything else is run on Wi-Fi networks. You know, you, it's one of those deals where you kind of have to pick what you can eliminate. Um, but if you want to, you can, you can turn off the Wi-Fi completely and make yourself an aluminum hat. You know, I mean, there, there's, it depends on what level you want to go to, right? Um, next one here is the foyer. No, it's a, mas it's a master bathroom, okay? So in the bathroom, toothpaste. Uh, who in here still uses Colgate or one of the name brand toothpaste that has fluoride in it, right? Most of them have fluoride added into them, so don't worry. You're not getting enough in your tap water. You can brush your teeth with it, too. Go home and immediately throw it away. Okay, don't use fluoride toothpaste anymore, period. Okay, when you go to the dentist, do not let them put the little fluoride things in your mouth that you got to suck on and taste terrible for 10 minutes. I remember doing that as a kid. I hated that stuff. I'm like, I don't care if it tastes like bubble gum. Um, the, uh, do they still do that now? Obviously, we haven't been to the dentist like that. Okay. They used to do the trazy. I like bite down on it and they leave you in the room for like 20 minutes and be agonizing. Um, the, uh, with the toothpaste, there's a couple of good brands that you can use. Uh, what we do, what we've been doing at home, is the Silver Biotics toothpaste up here. They just came out with that. It's a silver gel. And, uh, and so the cool thing about that is when you brush your teeth with it at night, it's driving nuts. Is that driving you guys nuts? Yeah. Like moving around. You guys seem all over the place. Um, I'll just stand right here for the rest of the workshop. No, no. <laughs> apparently you're radioactive. You have your cell phone on. Uh, um, so, uh, so with the toothpaste, the uh, the silver toothpaste. The good thing about that silver will kill bacteria and actually keep a surface uh, bacteria free for up to four hours. So when you brush with it at night, you'll actually find that you wake up with fresher breath in the morning because the bacteria isn't growing in your mouth as much, especially if you have candida issues. Uh, extended contact with silver will kill candida, okay? Um, then, uh, so we would use the silver stuff at night, and then in the morning, the Tate's toothpaste is awesome. Um, I don't know if we have any more left next door. It's Tate's, T-A-T-E-S. Uh, it's the same stuff that makes the miracle uh, conditioner, the, the lotion that's over next door. Um, we need to get more of it in, but if you guys want something we don't have any next door, tell Morgan, okay? And she'll, she'll get it on order. But um, the, uh, the taste stuff is awesome. It tastes great. It's simple ingredients. Uh, so I really recommend that. A germ Terminator. Do you guys remember those things? You guys remember them advertising on TV? We are the only ones probably in this room with a germ terminator. Okay. They used to advertise them on TV like 10 years ago. They're just a plastic device that you put distilled water into and it's got a casing over it. You put your toothbrush into it, put the top on, and then put water in it, and it steams the inside, sanitizing your toothbrush every time you use it. Because the alternative is it's sitting in the open air in your restroom after you beep, right? So if you smell it, it must be in the air, right? Okay, <laughs> you thought you were sick out before, right? <laughs> so, okay, so with the tooth, with the toothbrushes, you uh, if you if you pick them up, I'm sure you can still find them. They're called germ terminators, okay? And it's just a, it's real simple, and apparently they last forever because we've had ours for like I'm I swear 15 years, 10, 15 years. I mean we've had it forever. So, uh, but they work great, and you know that you're not getting stuff on your toothbrush, okay? Um, medications, if you have medications in your cupboard, Tylenol and Advil and all that, what are you doing, right? You know, go home and get rid of all that stuff, replace it with natural components, replace, you know, start working on clearing all that stuff. I'll, I'll never forget the day that I came home and I said, that's it, we're clearing out all the stuff. And we literally threw away 30 bottles of Excedrin and Sudafed and all that other garbage, you know, and went through it in the, in the trash can. It was one of those things that's funny because you hear you're throwing it away and you're like, can we flush that down the toilet? Is that safe? Like, I don't know if we can put that down the toilet. That might contaminate stuff. 
we were putting that in our bodies, you know? So go home and, <laughs> I mean, you're worried about the toilet. You were putting it in your mouth. Like, that's bad. So go home, throw away the medications. Um, all the, all the, the uh, you know, I mean, I'm talking, if you're on like a prescription medication, like a thyroid medication, you may not be able to do that. I'm talking about antacids and painkillers and all that, all that other garbage that you don't need, absolutely need prescribed from a doctor. Um, cleaners. Uh, we already talked about the cleaners. Pretty much the same stuff applies for the bathroom that you can that you use for the kitchen. Uh, hand soaps, the Vermont soap organic stuff. If you guys have used the soap in our bathrooms, it's awesome, right? Um, I'm raving on our hand soap in our bathrooms. Uh, that just happened, right? The, uh, we actually found that stuff. Uh, we were in Colorado. It was just one of those magical moments, right? We're in Colorado on vacation, and I walk into the bathroom of a health food store, and I go to wash my hands, and I'm like, what is that lovely smell? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> glorious. And uh, so, so what do I do? I pull out my iPhone, and I take a picture, and I came home, and that's why we, we switched at that moment. It was, it was just, it was just awesome. So uh, the the Vermont soap organic stuff is great, but there's a lot of other companies that you can use. Um, uh, you can use the Keller Work stuff, shampoo. Uh, there there's some good shampoo options out there. I mean, there's lots of natural <laughs> companies out there that you can use for shampoo. Um, or if you're like me. You, Hardly ever use shampoo. I like I like once in a while uh, as I'm using the body soap. I'll just take the Castile soap and just and you know, but I don't have much, so uh, so it's easier. But Castile soap and things like that. The conditioner, the Tate's Miracle conditioner is great. You know, for uh, for just regular basic conditioner. Guys, shampoo and conditioners is a big topic because. Uh, you know, the, if you actually looked at the chemicals that is caked on your hair, it's unreal, the, the amount of, like, petroleum-based products that are just layered on your, on your scalp. When you start stripping this stuff off, it's like your hair becomes a totally different material. It's like you swapped linoleum for leather. I mean, you're, it's, it's like a totally different thing. Um, you know, so, so the more hair product you use, um, you know, you, you, you just got to reevaluate that scenario, okay? Um, other body care products, you know, just base. I mean, there really shouldn't be that much other body care products other than, you know, deodorant, switch to a non-aluminum. If you guys use regular deodorant, switch to the non-aluminum stuff. Um, you, there's a number of different ones you can try. Uh, next door, I've been using the uh, um, uh, Herbal Clear Sport that we sell next door, the yellow bottle. I've been using that for probably eight years. I mean, this stuff works great, uh, but it's weird. Different deodorants work for different people. Some people they love the uh, the crystals. Have you guys seen those? The little that they're they just look like crystals. They're like salt crystals, and they never sweat with them. I tried that one time, and never again. You know, <laughs> patients were not happy with me that day. <laughs> so. Uh, so, you know, different ones work for different people. You just got to try. Some people are like, oh, you should try baking soda, you know, and, and things like, you know, they'll just put baking soda under their arms. But try that out. Uh, make, uh, not, not, uh, well, we're going to get the makeup, but um, perfumes. Perfumes are really poisonous chemicals, most of them. So essential oils, fantastic. Okay, uh, be careful with the ones like clove. They're strong. People know you're wearing clove, right? <laughs> but there's different ones. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, frankincense, except when I go out uh, with <laughs> staff and they say, do you guys smell a tree? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. I smell tree sap. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Um, uh, makeup. Uh, makeup is typically very toxic. Uh, I was going to have Jennifer just mention that real quick on, on uh, safe makeup because she's found some, some good options. You want to cover that? Sure. Yeah. Um, and there's the packets there for everybody. Uh, I did all the switching everything over. I did all the switching everything over, the cleaning products and, and everything like that. And then I realized all the different things that we put on our bodies from head to toe every single day, men included. It's not just not just um, <laughs> not just makeup, but you you use um, 
stuff to clean yourself, you use deodorant and all those kinds of things, and all of them have a high chemical load, especially um, hairspray and fragrance are two of the highest toxic loads. So um, there's a, a website, and if you want to pass the packets off, um, I put it on the front. It's cosmeticdatabase.com, and it's the environmental working group that puts it, puts it out. But if there's a, a product that you're using and you want to find out, <laughs> You want to find out how safe it is, you can um, search it in there. And if they don't have your product, it's like Dr. Mike was saying, you can put in all the individual ingredients and build a report to find the, the safety. And what I did was, um, since the uh, not so great cosmetics have lots of ingredients, I only did two comparisons for you guys, because otherwise we would have given you a novel. But um, the L'Oreal uh, eye pigment had like four. It had six pages until I made the thing smaller of ingredients, and you can see all the reds and yellows. Um, EWG, what, what they do is they give you an overall score for the product, and then they break down the ingredients to tell you how safe or not safe each of them is and why. And so all the red and yellow you see is no-nos. And, um, and you can look in the very last page, where it's like half a page, is a unique brand mineral eye pigments and you see it takes up less than half a page and it's all green. So you want to find products that are like that, that have all green or barely any yellow. Um, try to find all green, and that means it's the lowest hazard, and uh, especially if you're using lots of different products. Um, I put on the front my, my name and my phone number and then also my website that you can order Safe Cosmetics. But if you have any questions about how to use the website to find safer things, um, if you're trying to find a specific thing, whatever, if you need help finding products that are safer for you, I don't mind you texting me because this little guy makes it hard to take phone calls sometimes, but I'm happy to help any of you make the transition for healthier products because it's, it's such a huge high toxic load on you that um, I would love to see more people taking, taking advantage of the healthier products and not load themselves up. That's like it. <laughs> um yes it's uh if you if you look at a lot of the uh name brand products on there like the the big you know the big company ones they have a lot of them listed on there now but it doesn't have everything somebody uh told me about a toothpaste the other day that um that uh a guy invented over in uh louisiana um, that uses cocoa beans as the base of it, and she was telling me about it, and you know, was asking me if I heard anything about it. So she, I had her sent me the label of it, and that's the website that I use to generate a report when I get stuff like that to see if it's good or not, um, because I don't know every chemical under the sun, you know. So I use that tool, and it's awesome. I mean, it came back clean. I was like, I sent her the report. I said, sure, we'll try it out. So we're gonna try another toothpaste. Um, Vitamins, etc. cetera, uh, this kind of goes with medications. You really need to know what you are taking, okay? A lot of us have a ton of vitamins under our cabinet. It's funny when you, you know, you open up your, your drawer in there and you start pulling out stuff and you're like, oh, I forgot I had that. Oh, I forgot I had that. You know, you find all this good stuff that you never used. Um, so get in there and find out what you have. And, uh, but you really need to be careful. If you guys didn't catch the last uh, not the last workshop, the one before that, the Big Fat Lie workshop, which you can see on, on the YouTube channel. Um, we talked about zinc and copper toxicity, okay? And uh, the number two cause of copper toxicity is dietary supplements. So go home and look at your dietary supplements, and if you have uh, the, the safe dosage, daily dosage according to the EPA, which you get the majority of by copper pipes, that you're getting your water out of. Um, say that again. No, no, I'm just saying your water goes through copper. Exactly, yep. So that's the number one source. You're already probably exceeding the limit just there, but then a lot of dietary supplements, they're adding copper to them. Oftentimes, two milligrams in just one supplement. And so now you end up in this copper toxicity state, which we can, you know, you, you can hear all about the effects of that when you watch that workshop. So, know what you're taking. Uh, just because it's a vitamin does not mean that it's safe, okay? There are 
literally hundreds of companies now that are vying for their piece of a trillion dollar industry. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to get their piece. So no companies that have a track record of safety in the industry. You know, I, I, I know, you know, just looking out here, a number of you guys have brought me supplements that I've looked at and I've found problems with. You know, so know the companies that you are, that you are accepting as, uh, as enough to be putting into your body. Okay, pets. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one uh, because I don't have any pets. Uh, so I don't know a whole lot about it other than they annoyed me when I was a kid and, you know, and I was allergic to everything when I was a kid. Uh, the bottom line is, if there's anything I ever have an issue with nowadays, it's pet allergies. When I go into somebody's house and they've got cats, it tears me up. You know, no matter if you have allergies or not, you understand it's a function of your neurological reaction. Okay? Allergies are merely a neurological trigger that's set up when your immune system is compromised. So for me as a kid, I was immune compromised. And uh, my diet was horrendous. I took medications constantly. I was on 11 years of allergy shots. You know, so everywhere I turned, I was immune compromised. And so now I happen to be affected by something at the same time I'm uh, you know, exposed to grass and my nerve system sets up an, a, a neurological trigger to grasp because it can't differentiate what the real problem is, okay? And so when your immune system gets healthy and gets strong, it will ward off those things and differentiate better. So some people don't have allergies, some people do. But the bottom line is, you see it really doesn't matter about that. It's really the fact that, you know, pets in the home, they do leave dander all over the place. You know, so I would recommend as much as possible having pets outside or, you know, somehow contained. If this is especially if you're looking at buying a pet, you know, then uh, then just be thinking about this stuff in advance. I'm sorry, Danielle. <laughs> she just got a dog recently, so. Um, but, uh, but especially with little kids. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing, especially when you've got little kids because they, they don't, you know, they're on the ground. You know, you guys aren't walking around on your hands and feet you know, putting your hands constantly on your face and in your mouth. You know, little kids are those. So I really, you know, I've, I've had patients that um, one in particular was having massive allergic issues. I mean, face was completely raw all the time. And, you know, we started caring, doing all kinds of stuff. But one of the biggest factors, I believe, is I got them to agree to getting rid of their cat. And it wasn't very shortly after that that his face started to heal up. You know, so... These are, these are big issues, you know, we just don't realize how big they are. Um, exercise, you know, make sure that your pets are getting exercise because you got to think about their health as much as, uh, as much as anybody else. The good news is when they're in the backyard, they get more exercise, right? You know, they, they can run around more, they can be, they, uh, except when it's hot as it is right now. You know, they, they can be inside more. But when it's nice outside, leave them outside. Uh, better for the lawn or the carpet? What's that talking about? <laughs> Toxins. Toxic elimination, right? You know, you'd rather have the toxic elimination fertilizing your lawn than fertilizing your carpet. You know, you've got to clean it up out of the carpet and that stuff doesn't, especially if you've got little kids, think about it. You think it's clean. Why? Because it looks clean and because you use the cleaners. But especially with carpet, does it not get down into the, into the fibers? You know, and then the dogs running around outside, you're going around, you know, running around in the yard where there's been poop and all, everything. It's getting on your shoes. It's getting on inside. It's getting on your carpet, you know. So now your kids are putting their hands and, you know, everything in their mouth. You, you know, you can see it's just not the most sanitary situation. That's why I said really, you know, think about it if you've got small kids or you're going to be having kids someday. Wait until the kids are a little bit older to get the pets. Um, diet, uh, you know, making sure that their diet is good. Uh, pet health care, uh, th those two kind of go hand in hand. You know, have a professional that can teach you proper pet health, just like you have a chiropractor to teach you the alternatives of what the world teaches you. You know, the world would teach you one thing that what pet health care means, but of course it's completely backwards also. So uh, there is a good doctor in town, uh, Dr. Marcia Polk. 
right? Uh, yes. Um, we'll, we'll get you her information. If, uh, if you guys need her information, we will, uh, we will lock it down for you. Um, and, uh, you know, but, but it's not, you know, your, your typical pet food and everything, it's garbage. It's the equivalent of eating McDonald's. Actually, it's probably worse than that. Like, you would never, it, you, it, it's no surprise that most pets are unhealthy. Okay, last one, the great room. Uh, what does your family room look like? Okay, and the reason why I ask that this isn't really about about physical health. This this topic is really mental health. Okay, yeah, especially if you guys have kids, um, the you know we really got to think about what our family room looks like on a day to day basis. Is it nonstop movies and video games? You know, I I take care of a lot of people, and I take care of a lot of teenage kids who you know they're 15 years old. And they're still just nonstop sitting in front of uh, in front of games all day long, you know. And and so you gotta think about you know the big picture of what your what your family room is all about. You know, it's not it's not the dinner table. You know, the family room is not the dinner table where we watch football and don't talk. You know, while we're eating dinner. You know, use the family room for family time. Have family time. That's that's a good one too, right? Make sure that we're having a sit-down family time. Uh, what does your family time look like? Is it watching TV? You know, do we actually commu you know, converse with our, with our family? And you know, these things may not be that big of an application in this room. Maybe they are. But, uh, but you know, we really got to be sensitive to these things and reevaluate it. Sometimes it just takes a moment like this to go home and evaluate. And you're like... Well, I really didn't even think about that. You know, I, I, I actually do need to change up the way that we do things. Um, your kids might be mad at you when you take away the video games for a little while. But, oh well. You know, if it's good for the family, it's good for everybody. Uh, worn out couches. You know, bottom line, you know, most people wear out couches because we sit on them way too long. And uh, usually that's with poor posture too. So... You know, get up, be active, use a family room for what it's supposed to be, uh, build the, the family relationships, and that has effects on overall health. And, and uh, it really describes, this one really describes what the home is all about anyways, right? You know, that is, it's, your home is not just where you sleep. It's not just where you go home and watch TV. You know, think about what is the purpose of my home? What do I want it to be? You know, even if, even if you live alone, what do I want it to be? What is the purpose of it? Do I enjoy being at home? Do I get refreshed when I'm at home? Do I get recharged? Some of us that might require that we talk to our spouse, right? You know, that, that we reevaluate that with our spouse. You know, what does that look like? So just, you know, think about that and take the time. And, uh, you know, so in all, that's really what the chiropractic lifestyle looks like does you know does that seem offbeat or weird you know uh, you know some people especially new patients you know I think sometimes they imagine that we uh, that we don't shower but once a week and we you know and we uh, sit in the back and you know eat tree bark and you know stuff like this that uh, that we don't ever cheat you know, and, and eat out, you know, we just eat tofu every day, you know, it's, but the reality is our lifestyle really isn't any different from anybody else. It's just that things have been replaced. Things have been tweaked just a little bit. There's, in other words, there's been a lot of conscious effort into our health. I think that's probably the biggest factor that I can leave you with to finish. The conscious efforts because too many of us just go through our life we have lots of conscious effort into paying our bills and furnishing our new home or buying a new car or what clothes we wear or how we look we put tons of conscious effort into that or you know uh, our relationships you know if you're dating or, you know, engaged or whatever it is. You know, we put tons of conscious effort into that. But the average person just does not put conscious effort into their health. 
if they do, it's surface stuff. It's like, it's like, you know, just, just basic level stuff. But then you look at these things like in the home and it's like, whoa, you know, who in here just thought a little bit, be, be, be honest, that you know you need to go home and change some of these things. Okay, most everybody, right? You know, it's like, we know, we can identify, okay, these are some things we need to go home and we need to look at. And that's what it's all about. That's the whole purpose tonight, was just to make you consciously aware to go home and take a peek. you got to start somewhere. Yep. You know, it's going to be a work in progress. Oh, I mean, it took us, I mean, we, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been in practice now for 10 years, you know, and I, we're still learning constantly. Oh, I said I was going to give you guys the secret to uh, collars, right? Um, <laughs> the secret to worms is uh, the I, I found a great uh, formula that that some genius put on uh, their post on YouTube. Uh, get on um, Vermont, not Vermont, so uh, MountainRoseHerbs.com or any other website. It, it, that's just where we order ours from. But get neem oil. Okay, has everybody heard of neem? Okay, it's a tree. Apparently in India, the way that they came across this is in India, they have um, huge um, uh, locust infestations. And the locusts will come through and decimate everything. Every green thing will be gone, except the neem trees. They avoid the neem trees. And so they, they found this and they said, well, I wonder if it works on other bugs. Sure enough, it does. Bugs stay away from it. They don't like it. But it's completely safe. It's a, it's a totally inert ingredient. So you take the oil. Take one teaspoon of the oil. Neem. N-E-E-M. Okay? One teaspoon plus one teaspoon of Dr. Bronner's Sal Suds soap. Okay? It's a high suds formula without any scents or anything. And so what? And then you, and then you put it in a big, one of those big commercial squirt bottles. Fill it with water and shake it up. And what happens, this is so cool, the, the, the soap, because it's a high suds formula, it dissipates, but it balls up. It, it, it basically emulsifies with the oils and disperses it throughout the liquid. And some of the liquid, and some of the oils just sitting on top, it, it forms bubbles, right? And so it keeps it in solution. So every time you go outside now, you just shake up your bottle and you spray it on your plants bugs disappear and it's it's I mean it's really a cheap solution it's easy to apply you can even I mean if you have a large garden you can get one of these like large industrial foggers and put it in that and just go out there and burn, you know and just spray down stuff really easily this is what they use on bigger gardens so it works remarkably how often would you apply that um well we haven't gotten that far into testing yet but I would I would do um, we know that we've sprayed it on like we sprayed it and all the flies disappear. But then after it rains, it washes it off. And so you start seeing them pop back up again. So what I would do is definitely do it after it rains. That's that's one thing we've learned. Uh, and then and then I would probably do it every, you know, two or three days. But kind of the rule of thumb is if you go out and you see that they're starting to eat your stuff, that that's when it's time to spray. Could you use that like mosquito spray and in your house too, spray. Um, in your house. Like around the house to like keep bugs out your house. Oh, for like uh, yeah. I mean, for ants and things like that, like around the border of your house. Yeah, it would just. I mean, it's just it's gonna get washed away. Essential but oil. you need to reapply it. One thing that I've found, and that's that is a good question. If you have ants coming in your home, okay, get online on uh, Amazon or any anything like that and buy some diatomaceous earth. Just look up DEP. It's diatomaceous earth products. It's ground fossil shells. And uh, we had ants trailing into our, well, one morning we actually got up and uh, one of the boys, I think it was William, he had, uh, he had ant bites all over him. And we were like, what the heck? And uh, we, you know, we went into his bedroom and he had ants crawling around on his bed. They had crawled through the floor uh, through the seam, and they were coming up onto his bed and biting him during the night. So, uh, so I took the diatomaceous earth, and because there's carpet there, I sprinkled it all down the wall, and then just rubbed my hands on there to work it down into the cracks. 
done. They, they didn't come back again after that. It keeps them out because um, the way that that stuff works is it's like shards of glass for a tiny ant. It rips up their exoskeleton and kills them. So it doesn't really work very well outside though. Uh, we, we tried it on ant hills and stuff and it's, it's a waste of time. We have taken it around the outside foundation before though. Yeah, yeah. It just, it's just harder because it washes away. Um, but if you put it inside along the edges of your carpet, it ain't never going to go away. You know, it'll, it'll be a permanent barrier. Um, any other questions? I said I'd give just a couple minutes for questions, so if you guys have any... Candles. Wait, candles. Yeah. Um, beeswax. Yeah, beeswax, essential oil candles. Make them yourself. Regular candles um, are bad. For yes, yes. Regular candles are the typical chemical fragrances. Chemical fragrances. Yeah, especially if you buy the ones, you know, that are like Glade and, you know, and... Um, uh, probably Yankee candles and all those. They're, Yankees are, are bad. Yeah. If they smell stronger than they should, then they're not good. Beeswax actually helps clean the air. Beeswax. Very cool. Yes? We just put in a water um, filtration system, but it, it's reverse osmosis. Is that... Um, what you're talking about? You're um, it's not exactly the same. The question was if uh, our reverse osmosis system is good. Um, I do prefer the aqua space as the first option. And the reason why is twofold. Um, number one, you keep the, uh, well, I said twofold. I think there's only one fold. <laughs> no, the main thing, I'm thinking fluoride, but that actually takes out fluoride also. Um, the, uh, the big issue is, it leaves the good minerals in the water. So it lets your it lets your, your trace minerals come through. And you do need some of that stuff. Reverse osmosis, if you drink enough of it, you know, it it, it can, they say, deplete minerals. Um, the worst is actually distilled water. If you drink distilled water all the time, you're it's nothing but H2O. It will actually uh, dissipate your, your mineral level. So, and there's also a difference in the taste. I mean, uh, the water from, uh, from an aqua space, it just, it just tastes better than reverse osmosis. But, I mean, it's fine. It's definitely better than, than having nothing, you know, or having a Brita filter. Absolutely. My concern is I have to make bottles for her, so I was using the reverse osmosis. Yeah, I, I, I would not be concerned. You know, I don't think that would be the right word at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if aqua space wasn't an option, I would be telling you reverse osmosis. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just prefer the aqua space system. Okay. Any other questions? What was the name of the air filtration? Uh, the air filtration system is a air oasis. Okay.